Zimbabwe's Treasury has announced measures to encourage the use of the local dollar, the Zim dollar, as opposed to the U.S. dollar. This is in a bid to boost the local unit and tame rising consumer inflation. The measures include a directive that all government departments collect fees in the local currency, the introduction of a 1% tax on all foreign payments, and that all customs duty be payable in local currency, with the exception of a designated or luxury goods, and where, of course, importers opt to pay in foreign currency. Now, Finance Minister Mthuli Nkube also said that the Treasury will assume all foreign currency debts from the Reserve Bank of Zimbabwe. The country legalized the use of foreign currencies in domestic transactions in 2020, less than a year after abandoning dollarization. Now, economists estimate that 80% of the local economy is dollarized. Joining me now is Dr. Prosper Chitambara. He's a development economist, and he takes us through uh, the economic issues of Zimbabwe. Uh, Prosper, welcome to Business Edge again. Thank you so much for joining me. Thank you for having me. So it's easy to say 80% of the Zimbabwean local economy is dollarized, but when we talk about that dollarization of the economy, what does it mean in real terms? What does it mean for Zimbabweans, for small businesses? Take us through that as a starting point. Well, what, what it actually means is that uh, the U.S. dollar is now the principal or the main currency that's used for basic uh, transactionary purposes, uh, like uh, buying your basic goods and services. Uh, in the shops or even in terms of uh, service provision across uh, the economy. And it also means a significant uh, proportion of the wages, the salaries or the incomes uh, are actually being paid uh, in uh, United States dollars. So a survey that was done by the Zimbabwe National Statistics Agency a few months ago actually revealed that uh, more than 70% on average of, of spending in Zimbabwe was actually being done uh, in US dollars. And of course, those numbers have actually increased on account of the sharp depreciation in the Zimbabwe dollar that we have actually witnessed uh, over the past uh, few weeks. So for some sectors, uh, they are almost 100% dollarized, uh, some sectors, certain sectors of the economy. Uh, but on average, we are saying it's uh, probably around uh, about say percent uh, dollarization in terms of public spending. Okay, so now let's go to these new currency measures that the Treasury has announced. And these also, uh, as I said earlier, including that all government departments are to collect fees in the local currency. There's going to be an introduction of a 1% tax on all foreign payments. All custom duties should also be payable in local currency, with the exception of designated or luxury goods, and where an importer opts to pay in foreign currency. So, uh, Prosper, when we look at these measures that the Treasury is looking to introduce, what do you make of these measures? Do you think they will achieve what the Treasury hopes that they will? I think they will have some positive impact, uh, but uh, I, I don't think it's, it's going to be very significant. I think what's needed is a measures that directly address the massive increase in liquidity, Zim dollar liquidity, uh, that we have actually witnessed. And th these are issues that lie, for example, in terms of or behind how government has actually been financing uh, infrastructure or even the payment uh, of farmers, the agricultural sector. Uh, those factors have largely resulted in a massive increase, in a sharp increase in liquidity in the economy, which have caused the instability uh, that, that we're actually witnessing. Uh, so the financing model itself, I think, really needs to be structurally changed such that uh, we don't overly rely on, on the treasury uh, to finance, for example, long-term projects uh, like infrastructure, uh, roads, or even the agricultural sector. I think we need to be crowding in uh, the private sector uh, to also bridge uh, the huge financing gap that we actually have uh, in the economy. So I think the measures go uh, some way in terms of trying to stabilize the situation, but uh, as long as we don't deal directly with um, how government has been financing uh, some of the key sectors, then I think uh, there won't be maybe a substantive uh, solution to, uh, to the macroeconomic crisis that we've been facing. And of course, we are a few, two months before an election. We are having general elections in, in, in August, and we have seen already public spending has actually been uh, in, increasing, and uh, that could actually worsen uh, the situation, especially uh, just before the elections and even after the elections. 
Okay. So then, of course, the issue of the institutional reforms around, for example, parastatals, uh, the, the progress in that regard has been very slow because the government also continues to lose a lot of money uh, through loss-making uh, public entities. And uh, that also then worsens the, um, the macroeconomic situation through inducing more liquidity and also having a destabilizing effect uh, on the exchange rate and ultimately on pricing and on, on the macroeconomy. Okay, so let's look at something else that uh, the Treasury also announced. And this is one that is getting a lot of interesting commentary. So the Treasury also plans to assume all foreign currency debts from the Reserve Bank of Zimbabwe. And according to the finance minister, all export proceeds that remain unutilized after 90 days, that's three months, will be liquidated onto the interbank markets. Now, this is a part of uh, these new measures that has irked some economists. So, uh, Dr. Chitambara, what do you think about this? The assumption of this debt uh, that the Treasury is going to take on on behalf of the Reserve Bank of Zimbabwe, but as well the fact that unutilized proceeds uh, will then be, of course, moved or liquidated onto the interbank market. Do you understand some of the concerns and criticisms of this measure that many people have? And in terms of it as it being in the right step or the right direction, what do you think? Well, I think uh, there are obviously pros and cons to each of those, me to those measures that we have mentioned. Uh, with respect to the assumption of the loans by the Reserve Bank, of course, these loans were contracted on behalf of government. Uh, I think that's positive in the sense that it actually helps to clean up uh, the balance sheet uh, of, uh, of the central bank. Uh, and it also allows the central bank uh, to then be focusing on its core business. I think we've had challenges, um, and we still continue to have challenges in respect of uh, the central bank autonomy and independence. Uh, I, I think that's one key institutional reform that I would want to see, is, uh, ensuring that the, our central bank is strongly uh, independent and we try to win it off uh, pressures, uh, political pressures, or even pressures from the from the fiscals. I think that, 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 that will be critical. So those concerns, I think they are there, and so we need to, uh, to be strengthening uh, the central bank as a way of also of engendering a greater confidence in terms of uh, macroeconomic management, in terms of monetary policy uh, management. Then, of course, the liquidation after 90 days, um, I, I think, uh, obviously, there are, there are trade-offs. Uh, but, of course, government, I believe, is uh, under a lot of pressure to mobilize resources, a bit of foreign currency, to pay off uh, our huge uh, external areas. Uh, but I would think in, in the kind of environment where we are, where the economy is to all intents and purposes dollarized, I think it may not be necessary to have probably those kind of controls. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let me also take you up on measures because these new measures announced are just part of what we've seen as attempts being made to stabilize Zimbabwe's economy and also to uh, give some kind of boost to the local currency, the Zim dollar. Uh, we lo we've talked about the gold-backed digital currency for peer-to-peer -peer and peer-to-business uh, transactions. We've talked about the gold coin. All of that has come into play, but and that's been about the past one year, 18 months, and we've seen a number of attempts in different ways uh, in order to be able to get a handle on things. How effective have any of these measures been in the long run, or even right now in the short and medium term, to being able to adjust the situation that uh, Zimbabwe finds itself and address some of those macroeconomic challenges? I would say at best, uh, those measures have had a short-term stabilization effect. For example, the gold coins that you mentioned, uh, last year they were introduced, we saw the mopping up of about 20 billion uh, Zimbabwean dollars uh, from the market, and, and there was some short-term stabilization impact in terms of uh, moderating uh, the depreciation in the local currency and also price uh, in the, the inflation. Uh, and of course, we also saw with the uh, gold-backed digital coins, uh, the government has been able to uh, mop up uh, about $14 billion. So, so that's the central bank has been able to mop up about $14 billion uh, Zim dollars. Um, well, so uh, that is some short-term uh, impact, but it doesn't really have long-term uh, sustainability in terms of affecting uh, positively uh, macroeconomic stabilization uh, within the economy. Okay. So these measures are coming at a time when there are other things happening because there is no doubt or rather some doubt as to how far these measures will go towards helping the Zimbabwe dollar. 
which has weakened by about 70% since the beginning of this year, with the gap between the official and exchange rates continuing to widen. So, Dr. Chitambara, uh, take us through the factors that you say are responsible for this continued depreciation of the Zim dollar, as well as this disparity that continues to widen between the uh, exchange rates, especially with all the things that Zimbabwe is trying. Yeah. So what has happened is that with the massive uh, increase in liquidity, in Zim dollar liquidity, or we have seen also a massive increase in the demand uh, for the US dollar, especially as a store of value. So every economic agent uh, in Zimbabwe who is getting paid in Zim dollars, he has to quickly uh, sub convert that Zim dollar income in, into USD as a way of trying to store value. So obviously that has caused the demand for the US dollar to continue uh, to, to actually increase. So uh, that, that's how really, that, that, that's been the major channel through which uh, the Zimbabwe dollar has depreciated. The massive increase in liquidity uh, and that liquidity, uh, Zim dollar liquidity is chasing too few US dollars if you want and too few commodities, which has caused the exchange rate to depreciate and also prices of commodities. And, and of course, when the local currency depreciates, it affects the cost of importation, it affects the cost of production, and ultimately it affects a uh, price of, uh, basic, of goods and services uh, within the economy, which therefore generates inflationary pressures in the economy. So it's largely, I would say, the elephant in the room really is uh, the massive expansion uh, in broad money supply, uh, the unsustainable growth in broad money supply that we've actually been witnessing. Uh, not just over the past few weeks, of course, it has probably worsened as we approach the elections, but it's something that's been there uh, in our economy, I would say, probably since 1997, uh, when uh, the, on, on 14 February 1997, and the Zim dollar actually depreciated by almost about 70%, when government decided to pay a massive compensation to the veterans of the liberation struggle. So from 1997, uh, Money supply growth has always been a problem uh, in Zimbabwe, and of course, macroeconomic management is has always been a problem um, in the economy. And when you bring in this historic context, it takes me to a question I was going to use to wrap up, but I'll bring that forward now because there have been major policies about different currencies uh, being legal tender in Zimbabwe. And of course, we know that there was the 2009 adoption of the U.S. dollar after hyperinflation decimated the value of the local currency. The Zim dollar has struggled throughout the decades. That's the clear no. uh, situation yes. of this. But in the long run, yes. people also have to wonder, is Zimbabwe's situation so unique and complicated that finding a way out of this hole is so challenging and we can't also say this without of course taking into context uh, what the sanctions have done to Zimbabwe's economy as well but is this situation so unique and so complicated that there really is no solution in at the end of the tunnel in in, in the light that uh, can help Zimbabweans and the economy well I think it's uh, it's uh, I think you are right that this situation has gone on for a very very long time and, and in fact uh, the, this instability is probably become normal to most people. Uh, some of these challenges, uh, especially people that were actually born, uh, say after 1997, uh, when the crisis started. Uh, that's the genesis of the of, of the crisis. But I think uh, where there is a will and commitment uh, to bring together everyone, uh, I, I think I think the challenges they, they can actually be solved because we know. Uh, the issues that need to be addressed. Uh, but of course, uh, addressing them must be done in a holistic, in an inclusive, and in a comprehensive manner. Not just focusing on monetary reforms, focusing also on fiscal reforms, but also, most importantly, focusing on institutional governance and political reforms. Was also the political environment, like you highlightly pointed out, the impact that uh, uh, sanctions have also had. Uh, I, I, I will also need to, uh, to, to, to be reformed to ensure that the political environment is not toxic to sustainable and sustained growth and uh, development. And of course, that requires a dialogue, well-meaning dialogue between the local uh, political stakeholders and other social partners. And also, of course, the current re-engagement that the country has actually been uh, having with uh, bilateral and multilateral uh, partners. But I believe that with the right kind of uh, uh, with the necessary political will and commitment, with the right kind of leadership and the right kind of 
political environment that incentivizes uh, economic growth and development and private sector uh, investments and other initiatives, I think we can easily get out of the woods mm -hmm. because we have so many advantages also that, are, uh, that, that we could leverage to turn around our economy. Uh, you know, we have just, uh, for example, discovered oil and natural gas in Muzarabani and the northern part of Zimbabwe. Uh, we have uh, huge deposits of gold, we have huge deposits of platinum, we have huge deposits of diamonds, uh, and we have a, a dynamic uh, diaspora that is actually willing also to partner uh, with the government, for example, in terms of financing some of the requirements around infrastructure, the issuance of the diaspora bond, um, the diaspora philanthropy, uh, the few Zimbabwean billionaires uh, that could also be robbed in to try to, to resolve the, the, the challenges. So I think uh, there, there is hope for this country, but only if we do the right Thing. things, and yeah. we're able to bring uh, everyone on board in terms of uh, uh, crafting a social, coming up with a social contract to address the key binding constraints that, that, that's been limiting against uh, sustainable growth and development. All right, and you take me to my final question now, because there are some who unfortunately believe that these measures from the Treasury will likely fail. So, Dr. Chitambara, if these measures do fail, as some are predicting, what options do you think are left for Zimbabwe's economic managers at this time? Well, well <laughs> um, the option that, that quickly comes to my mind probably is to uh, fully dollarize. Uh, that, that's an option, of course, that the government has said they're not going to go that route. But if things continue to worsen, uh, the, 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 the authorities may not be may not have any other option, but probably to tempor temporarily dollarize as a way of trying to stabilize the situation. But of course, with a clear roadmap on de-dollarization. But de-dollarization is always a difficult uh, exercise. Uh, once people become accustomed to using the US dollar, it becomes difficult, even psychological, behaviorally, uh, for them to accept uh, using the local currency again. But uh, the options are a bit limited um, on the part of uh, the authorities all right it's a conversation that we'll continue to focus on we've had you with us numerous times looking at this but of course uh, there could be hope at the end of the tunnel we'll give these measures some breathing room a few weeks and a few months to see how the decisions and the actions by uh, the treasury play out for zimbabwe's economy dr prosper chitambara uh, developmental economist thank you so much for joining me thanks so much all right and Zimbabwe's economy is one of those that we've kept an eye on. So much potential, as my guest said, with the discovery of oil and gas. But Zimbabwe's economy has been weighed down historically by hyperinflation and dollarization of the economy. And of course, we can't forget the fact that sanctions have continued to put pressure on the economy and made it very difficult for Zimbabweans as well. There is pressure now on the international community, particularly the U.S., to kick these sanctions aside. Many have said they have not achieved their aims and the only people suffering at the long run are ordinary Zimbabweans. So between the pressure to remove the sanctions and, of course, the internal macroeconomic situations, what will become of Zimbabwe's economy this year? It's a conversation we'll continue to follow throughout the course of the year and beyond. You're watching Business Edge. We have international business headlines coming your way. Then a conversation that takes us to South Africa, where President Cyril Ramaphosa has finally given the electricity minister some power. But all of that comes up after the timeout. Mm -hmm.